Hello machinists out there. This is Jack and this is my first uh, machinery video uh, inspired by all of you people on YouTube that have made these wonderful videos that have so helped me get my 40-year-old uh, equipment back into uh, usable shape again. Well, not quite 40 years old, but some of it's uh, definitely from the 90s. So um, first of all, I wanted to show off my um, round column mill fix, uh, definitely inspired by um, a number of videos online. I was very lucky to have a local um, uh, scrap metal yard who deals in non-ferrous and stainless materials. So I was able to pick up these wonderful round uh, um, uh, lathe pieces that uh, are aluminum, as you can see up here, that I was able to just remachine into my uh, top and bottom uh, clamps onto the round column. Then I milled the strut that comes out here uh, intersects with the um, inch and a half uh, Thompson rod, which again, I was able to get at my scrap metal yard, uh, 316 stainless, uh, which is just wonderful. I did buy the uh, block, the bearing block online. Uh, I think it was about $70 on eBay. And probably the more uh, difficult parts were the um, design and uh, machining of the blocks to mount the bearing block to the uh, cast iron housing of the uh, mill itself. I did have to extend the handle uh, after finding out the handle interfered with the bearing block. And then of course the uh, bottom uh, clamp, uh, same as the top clamp, uh, also inspired by YouTube uh, anodizing videos, which there's plenty of those on. And all I can say is if you decide to uh, do your home anodizing, be very cognizant of the need to absolutely clean the parts before you um, start the anodizing process. Otherwise it wasn't too bad. So, uh, to demonstrate, I do not have a dial gauge in order to really read this, but I have found um, by experience that it seems to hold a couple of thousandths of accuracy from top to bottom. I still use my clamping nuts on the column when I'm doing heavy machinery in order to get a more stable head. A few other changes I've made, uh, the uh, plastic knob that adjusts from the... Uh, manual feed to the uh, uh, dial feed, uh, of course, broke, so I replaced it with one that I made. I did install a DRO on the X and Y axis, but I decided to stick with the uh, trusty uh, analog uh, readout device for the uh, Z axis. Mine uh, was old enough that it just came with an on-off button, which has been disabled, and I've replaced it with a, um, a forward and reverse switch, which works great, does allow me to forward and reverse the mill although I would like to put a uh, speed control on at some point in time. I do have yet to uh, redo the uh, covers. As you can see, I have a very low ceiling in my shop, and uh, now I need to make a uh, cover that at least protects my head from uh, being uh, uh, caught into the uh, pulley or the belt breaking and slapping me in the, in the face, et cetera, et cetera. Right now, I've solved the problem by keeping my hair short, but at some point, we'll need to change that. I did have one slight design issue, which is I've limited the range of the head uh, by the clamping device, but I may remake that into a smaller uh, 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 roundness in order to be able to raise the mill a bit higher. However, I don't have any welding facilities, so unfortunately I wasn't able to do the nice clean welding uh, arms that you see in a lot of the other videos. Well, that's it for now. We'll keep you posted on some of my other projects. I have this uh, lathe over here that I've got lots of things to do with as well. Um, not a great lathe, but it's serviceable. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing so much about all of your other uh, projects that gives me so much inspiration to do the work on my own system. Thank you.